Hello and welcome to another Vista Tips and Tricks video. Today's video is going to be an effects request video. I was asked how do we create a bass drop effect? And by that they mean how do we on one button get a selection of lights to flash to full and then have a timed fade or a timed decay. Now to answer this question and show you an example, I've jumped into the R3 beta and that's because R3 has added a load of new functions and features that will help us achieve this look. So to start programming, I'm going to release everything in the desk and clear live. So I'm starting from scratch. I'm then going to go over to my cue lists quick picker, right click, add a new page, call it bump effects. I like to do this just to keep everything organized. Now at my new quick picker page, I'm going to create a new cue list by holding down my yellow modifier key or my control key, tapping in it, and labeling my new cue list base drop. Now I'm going to right click that cue list, hit edit, and we can start programming. Now for this uh, effect, I'm going to be using my wash lights. So I'm going to grab them and then bring them to full. I'm going to quickly pop into live and then bring these downstage so we can see what we're doing. The only information in the cue list we need is intensity. So just to show you in live, we have our position information and in our queue, we have intensity information. So we're going to label this base drop and we're going to give it a time of zero because this will be a manual effect. So we don't need any queue timing. And that's our queue completed. Now to take this from a simple flash queue to a dynamic bass drop queue, we're going to right click, go to queue list properties. First thing I'm going to do is make it high priority. This is just something I like to do if I'm playing manual effects over other programming. We're going to make this an auto play and release. We're going to make sure the fader intensity to time is manual as well. We're going to exclude it from store. And now we're going to go to our timing tab make our release timing zero. And now we're going to check out some of the new functions. Now, as you can see here, we have three new functions and this is all aimed at manual flash timings. So we have the flash attack. So when I hit the flash key, this is how long this will take to come in. We have the flash dwell. So after the attack is completed, this is how long that queue will hang. And then the decay. And this is how long it will take for this uh, queue to fade out again. Now we can type in hard values for all of these. So if you know you want it to have one second in, two seconds dwell, one second out, you can type them in here. Or we can have any and all of these options follow live timing as well. Now for this kind of bass drop, immediate flash with a slow decay. I'm going to keep my flash attack at zero, the dwell at zero, and I'm going to make the decay follow live timing. Once I've selected what I need and altered these three options to suit my needs, all I have to do is hit OK. And that's that cue done. So as you can see, not only is it really useful, it's also very quick to program. So all I have to do now is hit close. I'm going to save and release. I'm now going to take my new cue list, put it on a button. I'm going to take my life timing to one second. And now when I tap this flash key, it'll immediately take my lights to full and have a one second decay. If I now take my life timing to five seconds and tap it, You'll see I get a flash to full immediately and then a slow decay. I can make the decay even smaller so I can go to 0 0.5 seconds and then I get a quick decay. Another nice thing is if I hold down my flash key, I can manually hold it for as long as I want there. And then as soon as I release, the decay will activate. So if we quickly go back in, we can have a look at some of these other options as well. If you don't want to use live timing and you know that you want to follow exact timing each time, we can make the attack 
say one second. Then we can have it hang there for two seconds. And then maybe we'll have it go out over 0.5 seconds. Once you're happy with whatever you've entered, again, hit OK, close, save, and then hit your flash key. So we have our timed attack in, our dwell, and then our decay. Now, if you notice on your playback, uh, these are also denoted by three separate colored timers. So I'm just quickly going to make these a bit longer so I can show you these as well. So if I make all three of these five seconds and then hit OK, close, save. When I hit my flash key now, blue timer shows you the attack. Red timer shows you the dwell. And then the green timer shows you the decay. So as you can see from this very simple example, there is a lot you can do with these new um, features. Having the ability to um, either hard code the timings in, or like I say, drop them onto live timing as well, uh, really opens up the possibilities and taking what could be a simple flash key to something a lot more dynamic. Uh, in conjunction with things like live timing snapshots to quickly change your live timing to whatever you want on the fly, you can go from quick bumps to slow fades at a touch of a button. So I hope this has answered your question on how to create a bass drop. If you have any questions regarding this video, or if I didn't explain anything, or I could do a better job of explaining something in this video, let me know. And if you have any other effects requests, leave them in a comment below, on the forum, or on Facebook. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.